you. Oh. Good afternoon, everybody. We were uh, here last year, and we were talking to you guys about how two Berkeley kids went from investment banking to mushroom farming. And it's an absolute honor uh, to have gotten a re-invite, what, uh, 12 hours ago? Just about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to come back here and talk to you guys about how a mushroom kit has gone from barely being hustled at a Berkeley farmer's market by Nick and me, to now being sold nationally and internationally across Whole Foods, Safeway, Home Loblaws. Depot, Loblaws, Bed Bath & Beyond. Definitely a Beyond section though. <laughs> true, true. And for us, the learning really has been over the last year about two main things, and from two main people really, and that's our customers, and other entrepreneurs that are doing really cool shit out there. And, and we are excited to share these next few minutes about some of these learnings. And I guess to quickly step back though, I do definitely need to absolutely acknowledge the fact that Nicole and I would never be here if it wasn't for our 31 person rockstar team that's hopefully watching right now. <laughs> and uh, my family, and I, that includes Dinesh, Anjana, and Arjun, as well as the most brilliant yet humble genius I've ever met in my life. <laughs> That's you, brother. <laughs> I love you, man. Seriously. Still, man. Love you. It's you now. That's me. So before we got started, we wanted to take a quick step back and thought we'd give you guys literally a rapid fire background of how we got to where we are today urban mushroom farmers. So for us, it all really started off just a couple years ago at UC Berkeley. And it was our last semester in college, literally made three months away from graduation, we were sitting in a business ethics class. And Alex had an offer to go into investment banking. I had an offer to go into consulting. We thought we knew what we were doing. Graduation coming right around the corner. And there we were sitting in that class. And we didn't know each other at the time. We were both just happened to be in class. We were paying attention. And both heard this fact and got inspired by this fact that a professor brought up in this lecture about sustainability. That you could possibly grow gourmet mushrooms on different waste streams, one of them being recycled coffee grounds. And for some reason, we both were inspired by that, reached out to a professor, he put us both in touch. We both met up in Alex's fraternity, hit it off, fell in love with this concept, started watching YouTube videos, turned his fraternity kitchen into a mini science experiment, grew some test buckets, got some support from Whole Foods and Chez Panisse, and eventually two weeks away from graduation, got a small $5,000 grant from our chancellor for social innovation. And that's kind of when we looked at each other and said, you know what? Forget investment banking, forget consulting, full-time urban mushroom farming it is, and decided to dive right into it. <laughs> and we, spent our, we spent our next eight, nine months knee-deep in coffee grounds, trial and error, trying to figure out how to take those paint buckets of mushrooms to commercial operation. Finally, at our first sale, October 9th of 2009, 3.14 pounds of fresh uh, gourmet oyster mushrooms to the Berkeley Whole Foods. Spent our next year really focusing on how to scale that up and eventually got up to about 500 pounds a week of fresh mushrooms being sold to all the Whole Foods and farmers markets around Northern California. And it was around that time that our customers actually started asking us some questions. They were like, hey, that's pretty cool what you guys are doing, but can we take that one step more local? Can we do it ourselves? And it really inspired us to create what is now our mushroom kits, and it started off a bag that looked like that, went through a ton of iterations, ton of different box designs to eventually what it is today, our main product, our grow your own mushroom garden. A little brown box you put on your windowsill, and in 10 days you get your first crop right at the front of the box. You get a pound and a half of tasting mushrooms per box, and it's just been incredible seeing the reaction from like families and foodies, kids and gardeners, and especially of us last year since we last spoke with you guys today, it's just been awesome seeing that momentum pick up and seeing a mushroom kit pop up on the Today Show with the cover of the Wall Street Journal and seeing a mushroom kit go from being just sold in Whole Foods, our first major retailer, to now Home Depot, Safeway, Nordstrom's, 360 in Hong Kong, Loblaws in Canada, and actually Alex is flying out in just a couple of weeks to actually see Toys R Us. So it's just been so much fun seeing this momentum build up. <laughs> and seeing our team grow from 14 people since we spoke last year to 31 people now. And seeing our coffee collection with our main partner, Pete's Coffee and Tea, grow to collecting and diverting this year 3.5 million pounds of coffee grounds from the landfill as a soil for our mushroom kits. 
But, you know, through this growth over this past year, it's, uh, it's been a roller coaster. We have made so many mistakes and learned so many lessons. And we thought we'd best use this time with you guys today to kind of share three fun lessons uh, that we learned along the way. Yeah, one of the fun lessons uh, is something that our good friends at TerraCycle actually learned pretty early on. And uh, TerraCycle is actually a company that takes waste and creates products out of it. And for us, that lesson uh, came a little tougher, but that is the fact that customers really do care what products are made out of and how they're actually manufactured. And for us, it was tough because the way we learned it was going from a couple hundred Whole Food stores to a couple thousand over a few months nationwide. And we'd be all excited promoting these launches uh, with, you know, within our community. And then, sure enough, a couple days later, all these phone calls would start trickling into our office saying, you guys are lying. I just drove to my store. I was in the produce department. I was in the lawn and garden department. I talked to everybody. They have no clue what these mushroom kits are about. They can't find them. And then we'd call the store, we'd explain how it was a little brown box, uh, you know, and then they're like, oh yeah, yeah, the little brown boxes, I have a couple of those. And people had no idea where to find them. It was a product that nobody had ever seen before. So for us, I think the first time it really hit home was when a customer called our office, had driven 45 miles, this girl, this woman was in Pennsylvania, had two kids, drove 45 miles to the produce aisle, couldn't find it, drove back, so spent like three hours in the car coming back saying she wanted to be the first mushroom kit purchaser in Pennsylvania Whole Foods, and then has a five-minute just cussing session at me with all that energy and says, you guys are lying to me and all this stuff, and that's really when I, you know, we kind of stepped back and said, we got to figure this out. We got to figure out how can we get consistent merchandising of our mushroom kits on these really fast uh, launches. So we started brainstorming, went to our, uh, one of our close mentors, Randy, the guy that got us started, went and uh, met him at Whole Foods in the Northern California regional office. And uh, I want to pause here because this is the picture of what the drive is from our Oakland uh, warehouse to the Emeryville uh, regional office to Whole Foods. In between there is a Home Depot, an Emeryville Home Depot. And this is where we drive by every time. And we started realizing that we needed to come up with a merchandising unit that was going to find a way, you know, it's something that most uh, other companies are using. And we started walking the floors and saw that there was three different types, all looked the same. It was either a metal rack, a plastic rack, or this gorgeously designed and, and perfected wood. And we kind of stepped back and we said our customers would hate us and crush us if we actually put one of these in there because they were not only 150 bucks per, but we're claiming we're creating a product that's sustainable, that's taking waste and growing food on it. And, it's, and we can't turn around and then create these fixtures and buy them, uh, create more raw material, uh, waste more raw material. So in one of those drives, we took these nasty, crappy samples, left them at the warehouse, jumped in our van, went back to this very same Emeryville Home Depot, asked them if we could take these pallets back, took them back, started uh, realizing, we're like, hey, let's build this unit out of this spent byproduct. And... The next picture actually shows what these display units look like today. And we actually have these in 70% of the 2,100 retail shops that we're in today. And one of the most exciting things for us is the fact that Home Depot themselves rolled out our product with this merchandising unit. So we're taking spent pallets that they were throwing away. We're now taking them, refurnishing them, upcycling them, and putting them back in the Home Depot store <laughs> themselves. And it's not only come, it's not only the customer that's seeing this, but it's the team members themselves that are pumped. So then ultimately it creates a self-fulfilling effect in which they get even more excited because they're like, that's badass. You guys are taking these recycled pallets from us. So they're giving us even more prominent display. And we've actually seen at the end of the day, you got to track it to the bottom line. We've seen three and a half to four times more sell through in every single store that we put these in. Okay. And the second lesson that we want to share with you guys was actually around us finding out the truth in this statement that the more you give, the more you get. And it's honestly, it's nothing new. I mean, Tom Shoes have been doing this for years now, but it took us a couple of really unique circumstances to kind of figure that out ourselves. And which is about a year ago, as we really started getting the mushroom kits out there to more and more retailers, that we started seeing some things happen. Number one was that we started seeing that people loved showing off with so much pride the mushrooms they had grown, and they were posting tons of photos on our Facebook page. And then we started seeing that that was driving a ton of traffic to our website. But the third thing was also kind of separate, was that the best response that we were getting with our kits was from kids. 
And so we finally were able to put these three things together. And just about a year ago now, we launched our one-for-one -one Facebook campaign, where for anyone who posts a photo of their fully grown mushroom kit on our Facebook page, we actually donate one to an elementary school classroom of their choice. And it's just been incredible seeing the response for this last year. It's, it's, honestly, it's been incredible. There's like hundreds and hundreds of photos coming in literally per month. And we actually reached over 10,000 kids now nationwide through this donation program. And I think one of the best things about it, though, for us is that it was something we didn't really expect going into it, was that as we started getting all these photos coming in, they were driving a ton of traffic to our website, but that was also resulting in really high margin direct consumer sales that in and of itself started funding these donations. So it just became this really cool kind of upward cycle where the more we gave, the more we got, the more we got, the more we gave. And it just blew our minds that in this day and age, we're so often like giving back and donating is just like a once a year to-do list for companies, like a tax write-off that if done right and actually partnering with your customers, that supporting your community can also support your bottom line. And that was a huge lesson that we learned this last year. And, thank you. And the last lesson that we want to share with you guys that we learned was actually from our friends, we took inspiration from our friends at Patagonia, and it's around marketing and just the power of transparency in marketing. And we love the fact that those guys took so much pride in every part of their business model and they would show off the good and the bad that went into making their clothing. And for us, Alex and I, we never really understood the power of that until honestly just a few months ago. And one of the things we've been struggling with for a long time that we were afraid about, anxious about, didn't really know what to do with, was the fact that our mushroom kits don't always grow the way you picture them as, as these beautiful bouquets of mushrooms. They can grow in some really, really funky shapes and sizes. And it was something we didn't really know. <laughs> we, never really knew what to do with this stuff. And eventually, honestly, like three months ago, I think, we finally got some support for our mentors, took inspiration from the guys at Patagonia, and realized, you know what, let's put this front and center in front of our customers and see what happens. Let's be transparent about this. So we launched a campaign called the Name That Mushroom Campaign. We picked eight of the most crazy-looking mushrooms that we often see with our kids and asked our customers to help us officially name each one of them. And it's just been so fun. We literally had like hundreds and hundreds of submissions over the past few months, people naming these kits. And it's just been awesome seeing the fact that like transparency was motivating customers from taking what was like a scary kind of funky looking thing, just making it fun because we were open about it. And we actually had a woman recently call us and she's like, you know what, I actually bought a couple more kits because my kids and I wanted to see if I could grow that Pinocchio and that <laughs> hunchback mushroom kit, you know? And I think it just proved to us that there has been a big, big shift these last few years from customers from supporting those companies that used to just have clever marketing to now want to support companies that have transparent marketing. And that's a big lesson we learned as well. Yeah, I would love it. to show Let's you guys it. that Last even in this growth, it's been exciting. There has been some major competition. And uh, <laughs> see if you guys can, does that look like our kit? A little bit. It's in Sacramento, California. That's in the UK. The next one, that's in South Africa. The Trying to figure out which one Nick Hill is, too, <laughs> but that's Canada. So uh, I think biggest thing learning is that there's other people are going to try to do it, and the only way to really stay ahead is to innovate. And for us, we're going to embed our box with vegetable seeds. So now you can actually not only grow the mushrooms out the front, grow the mushrooms out the back, but you can then plant the box, rip it open, put it in your garden, use the actual coffee grounds themselves as the, as the actual fertilizer and grow some more herbs out of it. So it's waste of food twice over. Thank you guys.